What's up, heathens? How y'all doing? Tonight, we're gonna be going over some anti-evolution video in the video from Off the Curb Ministries, and I'm not even making that up. That is what they're called. Off the Curb Ministries got uh, in a room with three creationist scientists, and they gave their best refutations, like on the spot, simple refutations of evolution. Our hands are not designed to throw a punch, as evolutionists say, or to throw a spear. They're designed to play the piano. Trust me, they're not spectacular at all, but I did have to learn a few things in order to rebut them, so yay on me for having to learn shit, and hopefully I won't fuck it up too bad. <laughs> a treat because I've probably got the three biggest brains, the three creationist brains in all of the UK right here next to me and these guys believe in a young earth creationist, they don't believe in evolution and I've got them to ask them one question. <laughs> Oh, what question is that? I, I can only guess that it's an anti-evolution question, like what proves evolution to be false? In which case, I have a, a list of three things that's gonna fuck you up. Now, on the streets, as a street preacher, I meet lots of people who say, I don't believe in God, I don't think there's any such thing as a God, and evolution's the answer. And then when I start asking them some questions and say, so do you understand evolution? They don't. So what would be a sort of simple rebuttal to evolution which you could give to these young people or somebody who doesn't really understand science. Let's start with uh, Andy first, Andy McIntosh. Okay, well before we get to Andy, Andy, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you finish, Andy. I would say that you just need to do decent research on the internet, basic research, and you will be able to understand the fossil record, why the fossil record proves that evolution is an actual thing. Uh, you can, you can go into biochemistry, you can go and you can look into the various experiments that we've done on bacteria to show that evolution is a real thing. These people love to just explain a way around it. Uh, they, they have an unfalsifiable narrative because they believe in the Bible. The Bible has to be true, therefore everything else is false. That's an unfalsifiable narrative. It's the same thing as the flat earth crowd. You can't bring anything to them in order to convince them they're wrong. At least these people. Normal fucking people, you have a chance at, at, at swaying away from creationism. These fucking people do it for a living. Hey, I'd say to someone who was saying that, where does a feather come from? I've got a feather here, right? Now, a feather is made of things like your fingernail and the hair that I used to have on my head, but I won't pull it off. But, you know, feathers have a remarkable structure which is only seen at the microscopic level. Ask, ask this gentleman or the lady who is asking this question, how come that when you put feathers back together again with a brush over the fingers over the barbs, they come back together again? There is an amazing mechanism of hooks going going one side from the each barb and barbules they're called these are mini barbs on the other side they've got ridges on so the hooks are sliding over the ridges but at a microscopic level so yes it's true that scales are also made of another type of keratin and so the evolutionist says that keratin from a scale is changed into a keratin of a feather but where did the structure come from tell me how did it happen this guy wants to know how do these things come to be. But we do have a lot of archaeological evidence that shows how feathers have evolved over time. They actually evolved out of archosaurs. Uh, ar <laughs> archosaurs. Feathers are most widespread in theropods. Those are the carnivorous type of dinosaurs. While there are some herbivores that did develop some uh, feather-like structures, um, it was mostly in the theropods. They uh, first presented as like these straight kind of wire or needle type of feathers. From there, what happened was, was they ended up branching out and making these, uh, I guess, a little bit more simplified kind of feathers, uh, which by simplified feather, what I mean is, is that they, they, they didn't end up being like as thin or as fine or anything like that as the feathers that we have now. They would be a bit more coarse and, and, and a bit more, I guess, thick, uh, like thicker of the, of the needle kind. So from there, though, they continued to evolve over the hundreds of millions of years into to the feathers that we have now. And 
in case you didn't know, they didn't originally evolve so that things could fly. That's not the original intent of feathers. That is just like a happy byproduct or use of them. Because originally they were used to camouflage the animals in their environment. They were used to like attract uh, members of the op opposite species. And they were also used to like help their young survive or help them survive in some kind of way. That was the original intent of feathers. And it just so happened that like when these particular animals would run or whatnot, they could probably get pretty good speed boost by using the feathers in order to catch the wind and propel themselves forward. That promoted the longer armed kind of animals that had feathers because beforehand you had the animals, they were too big like body wise and their arms were too short to actually have any kind of flight or anything like that. So the use of the feathers promoted lighter weight uh, animals and longer armed animals so that they could start to fly and glide and all these other things. And so that's how feathers formed. But this guy wants to say that they are like designed by a creator in some way. And this is not at all the case for feathers because they we have archaeological evidence that shows how they came about naturally, how they weren't perfectly designed. This guy's argument is that God handcrafted feathers to work like they do. The fact that we have archaeological evidence that proves him wrong shows that it is indeed not designed by the creator or anything like that, or irreducibly complex, which is going to be a popular topic for this video. Also, the argument from design is the main argument that they use in different ways. This guy right here doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. Everything is telling you that there is a mechanism here where you've got to have barbules on that side different to the barbules going on the other side. And that's the clever little mechanism in every feather. Did you know that every feather is controlled by a muscle on a bird? And that for some birds, there are literally tens of thousands of different types of feathers. Thank you, Professor Andy Ma Okay, he added on a whole bunch of extra information right there, but none of them disprove the fact that we have actual archaeological evidence that shows the evolution of feathers. This guy is just plain wrong, and it doesn't matter how how you try to confuse your audience with how many muscles you know it takes to control a feather, or how many feathers are controlled by one muscle, or anything like that, or, or, or how feathers work in general. None of that proves that it was designed or handcrafted by a god when we have archaeological logical evidence that shows otherwise. Just uh, a little bit of extra information here. Uh, we do have genetic evidence for scales being the precursors for feathers. We've been able to identify the genetic markers for the, the feather DNA. And in fact, in 2017, a scientist was able to actually turn on these genes in some alligator uh, embryos. And he observed the like sort of the proto needle like feathers starting to develop in these alligator embryos. So not only do we have genetic evidence that links scales to feathers, but we also have paleontological evidence that shows dinosaurs were the first ones to have feathers in which they evolved from that point on. Macintosh, let's come next to Professor Stuart Burgess. You need to Google this man's name. He's an interesting man. Uh, I think one of the things I would tell people is the human body is full of amazing design and irreducible design. This is a kind of design where you need lots of components simultaneously for that system to have a useful function. No! The human body, I guess, is, is kind of remarkable, but it's also very evident that it evolved. We have various organs that are vestigial. We have various things that don't make a lot of sense if it was actually designed. So what, what, I, what I'll say is, is that if our bodies were actually designed, then God is the worst fucking uh, systems engineer in the goddamn world. He's just... He's shit. So, for example, in the in the knee joint, we have a mechanism. Uh, this is a parallelogram four bar mechanism. But if I invert that, I get an inverted four bar parallelogram mechanism. And if you have a healthy knee, you have one of these in each of your knees. These red bars are the cruciate ligaments, and they guide the knee. You also have a cam mechanism, the way the bones roll over each other. Uh, but th this is an amazing design, and all engineers know that this four bar mechanism cannot evolve step by step. You need all four bars, all four pins simultaneously. It cannot evolve step by step. And lots of other parts of the body, we have this irreducible design. We have an arched foot. 
first of all, he's giving the human knee way too much credit for it being perfectly designed or anything like that. The human knee is an approximation of a uh, four bar linkage system. And it, it's not perfectly designed because it neglects a lot of important mechanical features of this four bar uh, linkage system. The human knee doesn't have rigid rods or anything like that uh, that he's suggesting. The ACL and the PCL are very much rope kind of, of things. They, they aren't rigid. They provide a tensile force to it, meaning that they can only really pull uh, and provide that kind of uh, force. And then uh, the meniscus actually provides the compressive force of the knee. But besides all of that, we're actually able to compare Homo sapien knees with the knees of animals that are extinct, like other animals in our own genus, the Homo genus. And then we can also use that to compare to extant apes that are alive now. And wouldn't you know it, <laughs> just like before, the evolutionary theory wins out because as we go back in time, in our own lineage, we see the knee becoming more and more ape-like. And that's indicative of our common ancestor who was also an ape that ended up branching off into the different apes that exist now, us being one of them and then the other apes that are out there, the bonobos, gorillas, and all that other shit. But what you find is that the, or like the original homo uh, knee looked eerily like the ones that are in the apes that are extant now, that are alive in like zoos and shit now. That's what we would expect on the evolutionary theory. But on this fucking theory that he has that it was specially crafted, I mean, I don't think that we would see like that kind of progression into the past, nor would we see the common ancestor having similar knees to the apes that exist now. We, we would see more special design, I guess you could say. And it's just not special. Which is a little bit like an arched engineered bridge. It cannot evolve step by step. All of the parts need to be there together. Just another thing I want to mention about the human body. Before he gets to that, he started mentioning the foot about how it's perfectly designed with an arch and everything like that. And the foot wasn't designed. I think that it was more or less shaped because of how we use it and what best suited our ancestors to survive in the environment. So I think that that, that is the reason why our foot is like different than other apes in our category. So he's not correct when he says that the foot is perfectly designed either. Uh, the human body is full of over-design. Our hands are not designed to throw a punch, as evolutionists say, or to throw a spear. They're designed to play the piano. When you think of the amazing skill that humans have to play musical instruments, that makes sense if God has created us, but it doesn't make sense if we were evolved to be hunter-gatherers. Just one last thing I want to say. Honey, this motherfucker just said that our hands were designed the way they were to help us play pianos. Pianos were developed in the 17th century, if I'm not mistaken. I looked this up earlier to be sure. <laughs> when was the piano invented? Yep, there it is in my search history. 1655 to 1731 is the is the guy, Bartolomeo Cristoforo. <laughs> he was appointed by um, one of the Medi Medicis in uh, 1688. So it was between 1688 and 1731. So, so that was the 17th, 18th century is when that was actually developed. So it, it's kind of odd how apparently we were perfectly designed, like our hands were fucking perfectly designed for pianos when they weren't developed until fucking thousands of years after we started doing shit. And I think that he's trying to just say musical instruments in general, but I would think that it's more likely that we molded our environment around what we're able to do instead of God created our hands a certain way so that we could play the piano better. <laughs> Uh, a lot of people think all academics in universities are confident in evolution, they don't believe in intelligent design, but having spent 25 years in academia, I'm amazed how many academics are very sympathetic to intelligent design. That doesn't come across in the media, but that's what I found from first-hand experience. First-hand experience being Christian academies or Christian schools or Christian universities 
Like, I mean, those are the only places that I can, like, I don't know what his history is, but my guess is, is that he surrounds himself with an echo chamber of other creationist scientists, which I guess he technically is a scientist. I don't mean to be derogatory when I do scientist when I talk about these guys, but I mean, they're trying to use their credentials to say that, oh, I have authority on this issue and it's, you don't have authority on this. Like, I don't care if you have authority on the issue or not. What you're saying totally contradicts the actual evidence that we have, the paleontological evidence. 